In this video, we're going to write a program that does a calculation. Let's try to write a program that asks the user what their name is, and then asks them how old they are, and then tells them how many years they've got to live if they want to be 100 years old. So how many more years would it take to reach 100 years old? First, let's get their name. So name equals, and I'll use input here, and we'll supply some text to act as a prompt. Let's say, enter your name. And we'll have a colon and a space there. And after I finish this, I'm going to ask you to put the code away and see how much you can write yourself from memory. And if you try that, at this stage, you would already want to run it, I think. Already try that this bit works before you go on to the next bit. And you could figure that out by doing print name and check that that works. Let's actually just try this and run it. Although being an experienced programmer, I know that this does work. Okay, so John, and there you go, it says John. So that bit's working. And that's how you'd want to proceed, I think, if you're new to this, sort of line by line and keep testing running your program. Now let's say age equals input and enter your age. Now when we've got their age, we want to do a calculation with it. We're going to need a variable to store the result of that calculation. Let's call it years left. And that's going to be equal to 100 minus age. So we can figure out how many more years the person has to live before they're 100 years old. Now notice that I've written all of these variable names in lower case. In this case, I wanted to use two words for the variable name, so I've separated the two words by an underscore. This is the convention that I'm using in this course for naming variables. There are different conventions out there. I think this is probably the most common convention to use underscores to separate different words in variable names and to make the variable names lowercase. But you could also use a different convention. The important thing is that you have to stick to a convention. Pick a convention and stick to it. Otherwise your code gets really confusing. You don't want to mix different conventions. Some people might write years left, so they capitalize any subsequent words after the first one in the variable name. And that's fine as long as you stick to that convention. If you're working in a team of people, of course you have to follow whatever convention the team uses, and they will normally have some kind of set of coding conventions that you're supposed to follow. Okay, now supposing we want to print this out. So I say print, let's maybe put their name, and then comma, you have plus years left plus years left before you reach 100. I'll get rid of this side panel so we can see the whole thing more easily. So what I may be thinking at this point is this is going to print, for example, Sarah, you have 12 years left before you reach 100. If someone called Sarah, who's 88, uses the program. Now, what do you think? Will this actually work? In fact, it doesn't. And can you guess why? Well, let's try running it and see what it does. So I run it and it says, enter your name. My name is John. Enter your age. I'm 48. I don't know where the years have gone. A lot of them went on programming. Let's run it. And I get a trace back. And what does it say? Well, it says the problems are occurring on line four of my file here. And it says type error, unsupported operand types for minus, int and str. So minus is an operator, and the things that we give to the operator to work with, so this and this, they're called operands. And it's telling me you can't subtract a string from an int. 
So when input returns text, it returns it as a string. So age here is actually a string. It may look like a number, but it's a string. And we can't do a calculation with a string. We can't take 100 and subtract some text from it. That's the problem. What we have to do is something called casting. We have to change this from a string to, let's say, an int or a float. I have to cast it from a string to an int. And we can do that by using the int built-in function. So I just need to pass age to the int built-in function. And that is going to convert this string to an integer. And I, then I can subtract that integer from 100. However, this program still doesn't work. Can you guess why? Let's try it and see what happens. Enter your name, John 48. Now the error is at line six. And it says, can only concatenate str, not int to str. So the problem now lies in here. So we've got years left, which now has the type int, but we're trying to join it to strings, right? So we can add two integers together with plus, and we can concatenate two strings with plus, but we can't join an int to a string with plus. So this fails. What we have to do is convert this years left to a string, and then we can join it with other strings. Name is already a string, so that's not a problem. But what we want to do here is just join a bunch of strings, and this is not a string. As you can see, if you use the type function to print its type. So let's convert it to a string with the str built-in function. And now we'll try this. Enter your name, John, age 48. John, you have 52 years left before you reach 100. What a cheerful thought. Actually, it's not bad, 52 years. I'm probably not gonna live to be 100. Ah, who cares? Now, it's pretty easy to break this program. Let's try and see if we can break it. Enter your name, John. Enter your age, 120. What does this do? Well, it says you've got minus 20 years left before you reach 100, which I suppose if I was 120 would sort of be true. Let's try running it and entering something that can't be converted to an int. And now we get a trace back, we get an error. Later on, we'll see how we can fix those errors, how we can handle them, but for now, it's enough just to be able to write little programs that do calculations. So what I would suggest is that you put this code away and see how much you can write from memory. If the answer is not very much, that's fine. Then you're gonna to have to look at the code to be able to finish writing the rest of it. But while I don't advocate making a huge point of memorizing things, I think it is good practice to try putting code away and seeing how much you actually do remember if you try to type it out and run it, because that will tell you which bits you've forgotten. And if the answer is all of it, that's okay. Just look at the code, but have a go. See if you can write this yourself first from memory and then look at the program if you can't do that. This is a free video from my Python and machine learning course. I'm uploading some videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python. The full course is absolutely huge and teaches you Python and the basics of machine learning and artificial intelligence with a ton of exercises and solutions. Please click the link in the description for the full course.